everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. He is a con man pretending to be her grandson, and she is a woman that, in this season, may be in a lot of trouble with the law. The show is Sneaky Pete, and our guests are Giovanni Ribisi and the great Margot Martindale. Now let's take a look at the both of them in the trailer for Sneaky Pete, season two. Pete. 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 I con this entire family into thinking I'm Pete. Hey, Pete, where's the farm? Hi, Grandma. It's me, Pete. Thank you for being the one family member who's always straight with me. You're getting too close to these people. Trust me. I worry when you say trust me. I thought you left town. I'm just tying up some loose ends. Ow. Hey, Pete. We want you to take us to your mother. I need $11 million. You got 72 hours before we start clipping your family. How'd you propose on finding it? Pete, hi, how you doing, buddy? You made me a... Oh, wait! Ooh, bang! Break me down and build me up. There's $11 million on the line. How are we gonna pull this off? It's physically impossible. The trick is always impossible until it isn't. Do you understand how bad this is? Get your gun and shoot through the door. You ever been on the run, Marius? My whole life. Everybody, please welcome Giovanni Ribisi and Margot Martindale. Hello. Hello. Hey there, guys. Hi. Hello. Thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks for having us. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Congrats on uh, season two. Thank I, you. It's nice to have uh, the two of you together because one of the things that I noticed about the first half of this season, which I've seen, is you guys don't really have any scenes together. I think we had one. I think we had one scene and a half of a scene. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe two scenes. Yeah. Maybe two. Scene. No, it's a, it's a little bit more than that, isn't is it? Is it? The dinner table stuff. Uh, well, yeah. How much do you say? How much do you not say? <laughs> you say nothing. <laughs> Keep you. Maybe I'm, I mean, are you talking about in the whole season you had one or two scenes together, really, at the most? Oh, I can't remember. It's so fast. And the whole thing takes place over 10 days. Yeah. That's nuts, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. I, I, I love the show. I love that it's a crime show that doesn't take itself too seriously. It's a crime show that has a lot of fun. And I also like that it's a con man show without kind of sort of slides in and out of these cons. It's not like each episode is a new con or anything like that. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Can you talk about what it's like playing a, a con man? Yeah, I mean, to that, I, I think that that's part of it. And, and I, just working with Graham Yost and Fred Golan and, and Michael Dinner. Um, is that it, it's not, I mean, and also, oftentimes in reality, you, the, uh, a con man, uh, just from the stories that I've heard and from what I understand, it, they, they, they will find themselves in the most desperate, ridiculous situations. And I think that there is a lot of fun in that. Um, and so I think we went down that road a little bit. Um, and, I'll, I'll, you know, I guess that was one of the, 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 the catchphrases was sort of like um, this season was based tonally more or less uh, you know, around a heist. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, yeah, there's, there's fun in that, and why not? There's a lot of introduction of, uh, of new characters and some, some minor parts in here and there and some great cameos from, from actors that we haven't seen in the show before as well. Oh, yeah. Um, Margo, talk to me about where your character, where we pick up with your character this season. Well, you pick up with my character at, uh, the, uh, the day after the, sec uh, the first episode, the first season ends. And I am trying to cover my tracks for killing a man. So uh, I'm doing everything I can to get rid of a lot of evidence. Uh, and there's something, I think there's probably, I haven't seen it. I think there's something funny in the fact that some of the things that I'm looking for are small. I think that maybe after, I, I don't know, I have to see. I hope it becomes funny. Uh, and a as what Giovanni was saying about con men, the more desperate someone is, the funnier I find it. <laughs> I agree. I really do. I find that hilarious. 
I hey, must too. be hilarious. <laughs> I, think, I think you're hilarious. Lord knows. <laughs> I think you're... <laughs> Sorry. This is your second show with, with Graham Yost, right? You, it is. After having done uh, Justified. What do you like about working with him so much? I just adore him, uh, and he understands me, and he understands my crazy, and he understands... Wait, wait, wait. Wh- what is your crazy? Well, lots of different things, uh, but he understands where I can go and where, uh, how far I can go, uh, and uh, he's, got a nice, uh, he's got a nice tone. I love his tone. You've got a, uh, I don't want to give anything away, but a great scene that I think is a, a, a really great moment of something that you're wonderful at, which is pretending that you're dumb when you're clearly smarter than everybody else in the scene. Was I pretending I was dumb? Yeah, in the scene you were, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what scene that was. You haven't seen anything. <laughs> no, but it, uh, I don't, I, I do play, I play dumb a little bit, but I'm also in over my head. So there is that, even though I'm smart. There's a little Edith Bunker in there, yeah. Uh, and where do we pick up with, uh, with, with Marius or Pete this season? Well, I, uh, um, I guess it's, uh, this season, um, it, well, it starts off at the, right at the end of the, the first season where um, uh, he, uh, the, there are two thugs that come and, and kidnap him thinking that he's Pete, and he tries to convince him, convince them that, that he's not, um, and then and then they they talk about uh, uh, getting back their eleven million dollars, and and as opposed to uh, looking that looking at that as as a problem, I think that uh, my character Marius looks at that as an opportunity, and then and then mayhem ensues. No, I'm sorry. But oh, one of the one of the things that I love about this season as well is the use of uh, Ethan Embry. Like yeah. he's he's in a, a lot more of the season, and he's really funny and kind of a, a gem. What was it like getting to, getting to work with him so much? Because a lot of it was flashbacks last season, and he was in in jail a little bit more. Sure. Yeah. Um. I've known Ethan Embry uh, since uh, since I think I was a teenager. Yeah, um, both kind of came up together yeah. around the same time, right? Yeah. I think he's an incredible actor. We we. Um, uh, you were both in that thing you do. We were both there in it is. that thing you do, um, and um, and and uh, he's a sweetheart and and so giving and talented and and um, it, it was it was really just a pleasure and a privilege to have him down on the show. Um, he was popping back and forth. Uh, he was working on another show as well, um, and so yeah, I think the world of him. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to, to con men, how much research do you do uh, of your own and how much do you kind of just sort of rely on, on the script and the story itself? Well, I, I think that, that con men, comes, con men uh, come uh, in all shapes and sizes. I think there was a book that I read called The Confidence Game, um, which is about the con men, but it's also about the, the victims and the psychology of being a victim. Um, and the propensity uh, to fall for a con. And, and I thought I thought that was really interesting. Um, um, I think at the end of the day, it it, it really comes down to the story, uh, especially with a television show where you don't really know what what the next episode is going to be from the next episode. and 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 you do try to make sense of it all and, and it just sort of um, has an organic nature like that. Um, is that the how this show works, where you guys don't necessarily know what's happening uh, going to be in the next episode? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, th- there's there's a, there's an idea, um, and we sort of know where we're going to end up. We ha- we had talks about that in the beginning. Um, Graham uh, filled us in, but f- but for the most part, the details, um, and 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 they don't even know really. You know, up until the, the, they're also trying to solve problems um, up until the last episode, so. Uh, I think that that's what makes television more exciting than any other uh, medium is because uh, you don't know how, how it ends, so it's more alive than anything else. In a movie, you know the ending. In a play, you know the ending. But in television, mm. you really don't know the ending. So I may be dead tomorrow, but I'm alive today. Right, there's so few options left at this point for plays and movies that we that we haven't seen. Really, I mean, there is no option for what we haven't seen. Whereas a television show, it could end on the second episode, and then the third episode is and, a new thing. And you yeah. don't know who's going to die. 
I mean, that's what's very exciting to me about television. <laughs> I guess I do a lot of <laughs> killer TV. You just turn on the TV. Who's going to die? Who's <laughs> dying tonight? It's better not be me. <laughs> You're just watching the Hunger Games, like real-life Hunger Games at a certain point. <laughs> I know that when I, when I did Justified, I mean, I mean, this is what got me, is that I read a script, and Timothy Oliphant looked at me, and he said, what's the matter? I said, well, I'm... I'm dead. I, I didn't know it. And Graham had forgot to call me to tell me that they were killing me. Was he apologetic about that? Oh, he's paid for it for the last five years. You make life hell for him on set? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> you said that uh, you love the tone. How does that tone also uh, come about on set with you guys working together? Does it create a sort of light, fun atmosphere? Yeah, I think we have. I think, I think there's fun. It's yeah. certainly... Uh, it's certainly not the Americans. Do you know what I mean? It, it has bounce. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it, it, it's, not a, it's not a drama, but you play it all straight. You know, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a sense on the Americans that it is a bit more brooding because of the tone? Like it's hard to kind of break up a little bit after each take, whereas with this I you mean, guys we, can have some We break fun. up, but it's, it's, a very, it's a very serious tone. What, what do you love about playing your character and love about being in the show? Well, I, it really is, uh, and I'm not just saying it, it's it's the cast. I've been yeah. I've been saying that yeah. all day actually. Um, um, it's it's uh, it's being it's being able to work with the people that that have come on to the uh, come on the show and 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 the people that are on the show. Um, initially, for me, it was uh, the draw before really anybody was involved was um, uh, it was Brian Cranston. Um, I think he's just a juggernaut for for an actor and a performer and um and that really is kind of what you have to go off of um and and fostering that relationship um as i learn as i you know the whole thing is learning experience for me it, it is the most important thing um because uh you, I, it, it is unpredictable it's not like you're looking at a piece of material and you're saying oh this is what the roadmap is and this is what we can do with it um, you don't know what that is. It's about the group of people um, yeah. and, and trusting that. Uh, we, what we know is that we have each other. Right. And it is a great group of actors, about as good yeah. as any of I've worked with. Right, and I guess if you have a great group of actors and you have a, a great group of writers but who are also putting together so much content, the actors really end up kind of contributing, being like, well, I don't know if my character would do this. Let's talk it over. Let's, let's figure this out. And everybody kind of works together, right? A little bit. A little bit <laughs> within the parameters of yeah. time and all that, yeah. you know. Yeah. Everything's fast, you know. Yeah. How fast? Fast. I mean, you don't want to take a lot of time uh, talking it over. Yeah. Not with the TV show. Not with the TV show. Yeah, I mean, you do get you get you get a chance possibly sometimes uh, when you get the next uh, episode in to ask questions and for understanding and and to sort of. Figure certain things out, but that's but you're still you're doing that while you're doing the current episode while you're on you know, so it's like exactly what Margot's saying. It's really fast. Does it feel like uh, because you're uh, playing a, a con man that you kind of get to play a lot of different characters within the season rather than just sort of playing yours, or because your char your character is putting on a lot of different playing a lot of different roles himself? Yeah, I guess more or less sometimes that that is, but that but then th that can. Uh, I think some, that, that can also get into something that's thematic that becomes hokey in a way. Um, and, and I think that one of the drives, and I think it, it is that balance, you know, it's that um, the yin and the yang of having something, like I was saying before, that, that's where the premise is more or less a heist, but keeping it emotionally balanced and organic and uh, coming from a, a, a real place. And so I think if you play into that, then it becomes... Um, for lack of a better word, hokey. You know, um, yeah. There, there's. W w it, I think it's honestly. Again, what what interests me about a guy like that is his desperation and the ridiculous, uh, and the situations he gets himself in. The the ridiculous nature of that because of the the decisions he made, and then coming out at the end. Um, and I I think that you have to, as Margot was saying, you have to play that with a straight. You know, you have to you have to play that in earnest.
There's a, a, a wonderful scene in this season, and I, I hope I'm not spoiling too much, with your parole officer and uh, Marin Ireland, mm -hmm. where uh, on, the, on the porch of her, her house, where oh, the yeah. you're yelling at each other. Yeah, and I just love the way that that escalated so quickly. That's in the and first episode, right? No, it's in like the fourth, I think. Oh, fourth yeah, episode. it was yeah. John Avnet's episode. That oh. was, it was on the porch. It was oh, wow, John Avnet directed that episode? Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah. We loved him. Yeah, That's pretty cool. He, yeah, he was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is John Avner from? He's, he, he's not Rocky, right? That's John Avildsen, isn't it? <laughs> no, yeah, John. you're laughing. <laughs> did I get that wrong? No, 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 no. no. It was it's okay if I did. Inside. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what, what did you ask about John Avnet? <laughs> ask me the question right now. John Avnet directed uh, Fried Green Tomatoes. Fried Green Tomatoes, okay. Okay, and he, he directed... Oh, he's gotten lots He of produced Risky Business. He's right, uh, right. He's been around. You wouldn't... Um, but, yeah, he's... Um, a, a really Another smart juggernaut, record. if you if you could call. Yeah, shoots. you know I didn't I even can't know believe what that I said meant. that word. I'm sorry. I, I think it means big, big a force, a, a big force to reckon with. You know, I've seen that so many times in books that I read, but I never looked up what it meant. It's juggernaut. Juggernaut. Picturing you seeing juggernaut, juggernaut and just going. Uh -huh. It's in a U T, right? The UT, yeah, maybe. Okay, whatever. <laughs> do you guys do you guys remember the first scene that you shot together? Not this season, but just sort of the overall. The first scene we shot together, yeah, was hi, Grandma, Grandpa, I'm home. Was that the first time you guys had met, or was there a table read or anything oh, like that yeah, before? Oh yeah, there was a table read. The year was 1932. Ah, we had a wonderful time. <laughs> we had a wonderful time. <laughs> we were gathered in a rehearsal space. <laughs> what was it like shooting the shooting the first scene? Did you guys feel like it was something different? Like you had something there, or just sort we of? Uh, we already had something. Yeah, yeah, yeah we would so. already yeah. we had done a lot of. Yeah, I don't know. I th I think I mean that was like. That really was 1930. I mean, that was like a long time it ago. Was. Because we well, that's had, right, because you shot the pilot, pilot, and there was like a we ton of time, right? Up. Yeah, yeah. It was three and a half years ago. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, that was, and that was the, uh, the pilot, and, and you want to talk about fast. I mean, that was definitely, it, that was, uh, you know, pilots sometimes they'll do three weeks. Or it'll take the, the time that's, that's almost uh, a, an indie film or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess you you never know, but yeah, but you just try to do your do what you can, you know. Yeah, it really feels like, and it felt like after the the pilot that the show sort of started finding its tone after a few episodes. And this season, it really has found the the specific tone that it that it wants to take. In the same way that I think Justified found it in the second season, as well. Because you were there. Yeah, I was like there. That? Did you like <laughs> what I did there? <laughs> I. Um, me, me, me. Oh, it's great. Me, 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 me. Oh, please. Um, You're great. Sorry. She's amazing. She's a juggernaut. Yeah. She's a juggernaut. <laughs> the. I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. I did that to you. Thank Sorry. You. Thank you. Um, but oftentimes that happens with, with, with television that, they, that you really find everything really land, starts landing uh, the best that it can in the second season. I remember uh, in the first season, in episode eight, uh, we'd had that, I think. We'd had the car wreck. I think I'd already killed the guy. I mean, accidentally, of course. Might have been in nine. I don't remember. Uh, the, it was uh, in, in nine, I think, yes. And we were standing in the woods mm -hmm. while uh, Taylor Shane uh, cleans the whole thing up. And I looked at Peter Garrity, my husband, and I said, I get the tone. And this is in the eighth or yeah. ninth episode. I said, I get it. It's a little bit of Fargo. Mm. And I think that's right. It's a little bit of Fargo. Now, what's that like coming back into the second season, having, having gotten that tone late in uh, the first? I forgot all about it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, let's get some questions from our audience. What do we got here? So, Hello. hi, everyone. Hi, Giovanni. Hey. I feel like I know you because I've worked on Wall Street for dozens of years. So... You're kind of an iconic character. Um, good luck with the new series. Thank but I want to ask a pretty predictable question regarding Boiler Room. Okay. So just like its predecessor, Wall Street, it spawned a lot of great one-liners. So what's your favorite one-liner from Boiler Room? Uh, hopefully one of you or Ben Affleck's comments I have my favorite, but what do you like best? Um, I, I wish I could remember. I think that was 20 years ago now. And, and, I, and I, gosh, I, I wish I could remember. 
Uh, you quote Notorious B.I.G. in it. I remember that, right? I guess Biggie so, Smalls. but even that, I, I probably, I don't, I don't, I, I, it's a, it's all. Selling's uh, not selling. It was yeah. There you go. Sure. There you go. Buy what sell. You, maybe buy maybe sell. you guys can help me out. Yeah. <laughs> buy sell. Did I say hello at any point <laughs> in that film? <laughs> sell it. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> this film is hot. It's like a boiler in here. <laughs> and something it's very like... uh, something very open. You said it's all about the dollar, kid. Oh. There it is. Oh, sure. Wow. Okay. Wow. Now, say that again. It's all about the dollar, kid. It's all about a dollar. Are you dressed like boiler room? No, well, oh, okay. not on his first yeah. day, but on his last day. Yes, it's uh, that's great. That's great. Uh, next question. Are you going to ask him for quotes from Mod Squad? Oh. No quotes, no quotes. <laughs> <Come laughs> question for Margot. Um, you play some very complex uh, characters over both TV and film over the many years. You've been quoted as saying that the, um, your roles in Justified and that Millie Dime Baby was most enjoyable, and then your character in The Americans. Claudia was the most complex. I just wondered if you could touch upon that, because you mentioned earlier the tone of the show with the Americans was very intense. I just wondered if that added to the complexity of the role. Well, there's no comedy in the Americans, really. Certainly not in my part. And uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's all about staying in the head of a soldier, that for me. It's because it's staying in a head that gives nothing away. So it's, uh, it's a very... It's a very, uh, it, it's a part that I play with my hands tied behind my back because I'm a little bit buckled down. Mm. Uh, and what's happened with that is that it's given me a new part. You know what I mean? In buckling down, I became somebody new, which was I exciting for me. Mm -hmm. Are you naturally a bit more sort of jovial and, and, and what do comedy? You think, Rick? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, naturally. Are you Not me off? Claudia, that's for sure. <laughs> Next question. I think this is our last one right here. Uh, hi, uh, big fan of both of you guys. Um, I have to say, my favorite television quote of all time is "My sister's gonna have my baby." So I, I, it's, I, I, it's by far one of my favorites. Um, oh, quick question. The quotes today. Uh, yeah, oh, he got me thinking about it, so I just had to keep it rolling. Um, Pop quiz. Yeah. <laughs> I remember see, watching Entourage. I was a big fan of that show also, and I remember you popping on there and me really loving your character, and they were doing big things, but it seemed um, like your E's first client, uh, other than Vince, and then you have this catch where your movie has to get made, but then the movie doesn't get made, and then he starts his own company, but we never see or hear from you again. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there was anything to that, if you were supposed to be on for bigger, but something happened. No, no, that was it. That was basically it. <laughs> it was, they said that. And, yeah. But as far as I know, yeah. They haven't called. <laughs> they haven't called. I mean, maybe there's something in the Probably distant future. But, Here, yeah, then, you'll no, have I gotta make a phone call about that. I gotta call somebody. <laughs> Sorry. What happened with that show that's not right, on the yeah, air I anymore? I thought I, that yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, exactly. All right, um, thanks, thanks. Guys, uh, I gotta let you go. I love Sneaky Pete, I love the new season. Congratulations. Thank you so it's really much. Great. We're very excited about it. Um, it gonna... comes, it drops March 9th. There it is, I didn't so have to please, do that. Thank you. So please, please watch. Mm -hmm. Do watch, it's a lot of fun. It's a great it season. It really is television. a lot of fun. Everybody give it up for Giovanni and Margo, let's hear it. Thank you very, very much.